Good day, everyone. Today I'm talking to Sandra D'Souza, who's the founder of Elect. Good day, Sandra. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Tony? Good, thank you. And Sandra, thank you so much for agreeing to uh, be part of this interview session uh, to share your story to your, to and your journey with Elect. Oh, thank you for having me on the show. It's great to um, for the opportunity to talk about Elect. And I love talking about Elect, so that's all great. Good on you, Sandra. And, and is it okay if I move on to our first question? Yeah, go for it. Thank you. Um, can you please share a little about yourself, Sandra, the place you were born, your education, uh, your passion, the things that you enjoy doing, and one thing uh, that the public might not know about you? Sure. Um, I guess um, for me, um, I mean, I'm, I'm an Australian, uh, an, an immigrant, I guess, um, where we migrated when I was 12 years old. Um, and so I was actually born in Hong Kong. And my parents are from India, because you can tell that I don't really have a Chinese background. Um, but the one thing that probably the public might not know is the fact that um, I used to speak fluent Cantonese. Wow. So that's one okay. of the benefits of <laughs> being uh, born in Hong Kong at a young age and just picking up a new language, um, not taught um, at school or at home. Um, and from very early on, I think um, in terms, I think with the passion that I have is about um, advocating um, mm -hmm. and for people who I believe that I can help. And I fell into, um, I guess, from a friend actually in high school who taught me about uh, the gender inequality and start off pointing out on television. And ever since then, I've pretty much observed, you know, all around the people, uh, opportunities and the difference between the genders. And then I joined an international NGO uh, called Business and Professional Women about 20 odd years ago. And ever since then, I've uh, been advocating as a volunteer for women's rights. Good on you, Sandra. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And, 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 and um, Sandra, moving on to our next question. Uh, can you please share about your work experience prior to you starting um, ELECT? Sure. I mean, I, I actually started off as an accountant uh, working for a multinational publishing company um, and pretty much stuck in the media industry. And what I found was that I have the uh, ability to interpret the numbers to make it easy to understand and manageable for the creative types, the creative directors that I worked with. Okay. Um, and, and had the opportunity to even work in US and in London for three years okay. uh, with multi, like larger companies. So I got my fair share of corporate background. And, um, and then um, and I guess also what I did was um, I thought, well, I, my first degree wasn't in accounting. It was a, a, a business degree. And I thought, if I'm going to take accounting seriously, and even my boss was saying at the time, like, you know, you need to get qualified. So I did a master's in accounting, did the whole London thing. And when I came back, I thought, you know what, I really actually prefer the business side. So I did an MBA. Okay. I worked my way through to the senior levels uh, of management. And, um, and I think I have an entrepreneurial bug in me so in my early 30s I was single I had no mm -hmm. mortgage and I thought well <laughs> I'm gonna just stop just take a break from my career and try mm -hmm. this um entrepreneurial venture so I start my um consultancy but I bought into a franchise just okay. to learn how it all does and, and do and, and work with businesses uh consulting sharing my business experience with them and I really loved it um, but then I met my husband and we were going to get married and have children. So I thought I'll just go back to work, but I really missed it. Um, and so I think about 15 years ago, I went back into working. It was around the time where tech startups were popping up. So um, I helped technology companies, helped them with capital raising. And then I got an opportunity to start my own business. Mm -hmm. which was about eight years ago and loved it. I just loved every element of it. But I realized like with all the knowledge that I had, um, even with my MBA, my degrees, uh, my consultancy, working with a variety of businesses, until you do it yourself, you just learn so much more. 
That's true. And so um, I was very lucky that I had my business acquired uh, by an international company, wow. helped them with the acquisition and the transition. Um, and I knew my next business was going to be elect, which um, whatever business I wanted to do, the next business had to be about gender equality. Um, and so I needed to find a way of how to make that work. And so I accumulated all that experience um, and putting it into Alexis my next venture. Good on you, good on you, Sandra. Very, very encouraging. And and Sandra, moving on to the next question, you've yeah. touched on this um, in in your answer, but but um, can you please tell me when did you start Elect and what was the inspiration behind this um, entrepreneurial venture? Um. It was. It's a very good question. I came across uh, a group, um, Entrepreneur Institute, and they have uh, Genius U, which is an entrepreneurship platform. Okay. And they have a test, and they, it tells you about the profile, and, and I and the profile helps me identify. Like I get all my team members to do. You, my husband has done it, so then I understand the dynamics. Okay. But they also have a test called the Purpose Test which they align your purpose with one of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Yeah. So I did the test and the test results came back and told me that my purpose is gender equality. Mm -hmm. And I thought, of course it is. It was no surprise, but it gave me a clear definition um, or a clear pathway that that is my purpose. And, and so like, you know, like what I've said earlier that, you know, that I wanted to take all the business knowledge that I have and I wanted to create a business that would work towards solving gender inequality. And um, and I know it's a big ask and mm -hmm. it took a long time. So also did a, a workshop to try and work out an um, exponential business okay. that can be, that can solve in that. Spend the weekend, spend six months putting, spend the weekend putting the concept together, spend six months refining the concept into a great business model and then spending about a year on the technology platform before launching the business. Good on you, Sandra. Good on you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. And um, moving on to our next question, uh, could you please share about Elect's unique product offerings, that which is a standout for your customers? I do realize that Elect is, is more or less like a movement, you know what I mean? You want to bring change into society. Yeah. Um, but even then, you know, um, what, 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 does a company or a business get from you when they sign up with Elect? So, so I guess um, you're right. You know, yes, it is a movement, um, but the movement alone can't create, like, can't be a business in itself. Mm -hmm. So, I had to think about what is the problem that we're really trying to solve, and what over the research and and I guess is taking the time is finding out that there's small businesses, what I call micro entrepreneurs, that make you know less than two million dollars in turnover. A year, so which applies to a lot of small businesses, and they, they, you know, just having customer clients, sorry, corporate customers, as their customers would make a difference to them. Okay. And the For corporate sure. and government customers also want to help small businesses and support them, but don't know how to do it. So that's where the the concept and the model, um, you know, over the months, um, fine tune into creating this digital marketplace that connects small businesses with corporate customers. And what happens is when they do business on the marketplace, um, there is a transaction fee and part of that transaction fee funds projects, verified projects mm -hmm. that are supporting gender equality. So that's the start. I mean, I could see us doing a lot more, but that is the start of what Elect is about, that every time you do business on that platform, you can do business on any other platform. You can go to eBay, you can go to Etsy, um, you know, Upwork or Freelancer. Um, there's many, many amazing marketplaces in Airtasker. Um, but what Elect offers is that that you know that there is a transparent and immediate social impact every time you do business on that platform. Excellent, excellent. That's really, um, really good to hear. And it also shows that you've really put a lot of thought into it, isn't it, before you actually decided to go yeah. there. A lot of thought, a lot of research, a lot of, and, and it has evolved um, over the time. And from the initial idea of what um, I was looking at has changed a lot, but it feels, not it feels, but it just shows that the more people I talk to, and, and also we've, we've got it 
obviously launch of the market and people are using it. So you know that this is something that people want. Good on you, Sandra. Thank you for sharing that. And, and Sandra, moving on to our next question. Um, what lessons have you brought forth from your previous business startups, which I think you have a few, uh, into Elect? Yeah, I think um, all entrepreneurs and, 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 you know, we're a creative bunch and we love ideas. So, and you can get distracted with different ideas all yeah. the time. I think my advice from what I've learned in the past um, mainly is to, to remain focused, mm -hmm. to take feedback, um, but also to keep an eye on cash flow um, and trying to make it as um, cash flow positive with your life mm -hmm. as well as your business. And it's not easy. And so, um, and also when you're trying to invest into a growing business, it, it is challenging, um, but I think with having tried to grow the other business, there were times that you think, oh, my God, how am I going to manage this? It's gone crazy. And then you have circumstances like COVID that can absolutely, you know, just put your business into a worse position. So with what I've learned from Elect, and Elect actually has thrived in COVID, which I know we'll talk about that a little bit later, but what 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 is important is laying really solid foundation, even from a business idea and be very, um, even though you're, you're thinking about the strategy and the, um, the future, mm -hmm. be very much across all of the details and understand all of the details, um, and delegate appropriately, but do not, um, kind of like abscond responsibilities. And I would say that that learning that I've done in the past has helped me so far um, get elected in the right direction. And, and also um, being surrounded with the right network of people who understand your business, who understand you and what you're trying to achieve and, who's, um, and, and bounce ideas with them, um, the right people. Because if you bounce ideas with the wrong people, um, they just, you know, poo poo your idea or give you mm -hmm. the wrong direction. But if you bounce ideas with the right people, what you see is that things improve like 10 times better. That's very really true, isn't it? That's very really true. So the, yeah. the, the having, having the right network is such an important or crucial part of, uh, an entrepreneur's journey. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, and, I, and I've had the wrong mentors before, as well as the right mentors, the right mentors made a huge difference. The wrong mentors got me distracted and 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 um in a worsening position and i don't they don't mean to they're not bad people it's just you know they're just not the right fit yeah and and sometimes you know i think we need both you need the right mentors and the wrong mentors because sometimes you know you can actually have a comparison and 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 yeah. maybe that would help you in making better decisions into the future so exactly. that can actually be a good thing as well and sometimes the wrong mentor may not be right at the time, but could be mm -hmm. right later on as well. So it's it's a case of just understanding when is the right advice for you and which advice is right as well. Good on you, Sandra. Thank you so much. And uh, moving on to our next question, Sandra, could you please share about the highs in your business, um, Elect, and for you personally, before the coronavirus pandemic hit? Um, well, the highs of the business is really having having the right support of people mm -hmm. along the way um helping me fine tune i pre-sold the membership before the business was launched mm -hmm. and and that was a so great with my network and that was really great to get their support and understanding um and also their commitment to to this business concept that they say yep Sandra, you're on the right track I will, I will pre-purchase the membership like you do with Kickstarter, but I didn't do it in the Kickstarter way. I just did it with my network and they get, that gave me the validation. Um, and just following the path of lean startup and, and creating an MVP, a minimum viable product, mm -hmm. uh, where you keep testing with potential customers and with real customers so that you have the right product. And, and the highs are, are just, just that advice and that next step, every step of improvement i'm just seeing wow i wouldn't have been able to do this myself this person has certainly given me a really good support um and and 
just getting it to the point of um, launching it. And it got launched before, just before COVID started as well, which is, I mean, I know it started in January, but it's really more around March when it hit Australia quite hard and, and America as well. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. And, and Sandra, moving on to the next question. Um, when the pandemic hit Australia, uh, what were the steps you took to mitigate its effect on your business? It's a very good question, Tony. Um, when before the pandemic hit, I had opportunities. I was I was I had actual commitments to speak to people internationally. I was travel good plan, plans to travel, as well as speaking at a conference about elect, and all of that just stopped or got postponed. Mm -hmm. And um, and the platform itself was was global, so it was trading in US dollars. Um, but knowing that we had all of these travel restrictions and freight restrictions, what we did is we thought, look, you know what? The world is just going pear shape. A lot of small businesses are suffering. We're all about supporting small businesses. So we changed the currency to Australian dollars. We focused on Australian. Okay. Um, and and offered it for free for uh, businesses. Um, and so what we saw was a lot of businesses took the opportunity and signed up. They loved it. They got to they, they, who those who didn't have a digital presence that needed a digital presence. Elect was a platform for them, and okay. so it was a really good way to help them. And then we've learned from that. And um, and we now that we've gone back to sort of like the normal business model arrangements we've now also offered a very basic free membership so that we can help as many suppliers who are not ready um, to be in a paid environment but certainly that we can still help them good on good on you and i think maybe you know uh, if the pandemic had not hit australia you wouldn't probably have made that decision of giving that free exactly. membership so interesting yeah. isn't it how and then you continue you're tr planning to continue with that offer and, and what's been good is people understanding um, with the supply chain, the importance of local suppliers, the smaller suppliers and supplier diversity. So Elect in itself, tackling the supply chain, being a marketplace, you know, supporting business to business is actually at the right time with COVID. Mm -hmm. We're seeing this um, it's, it's, it's a good opportunity for us in a way um, to help as many people and that people want that sort of help. Okay. Okay, so if a business wants to sign up to a Let's Free membership, they can basically go onto yep. your website and do it. Exactly, they can do it. Excellent, thank you, Sandra. And um, moving forward, uh, Sandra, what are your plans for your business? Um, so we're actually um, sort of like, well, move forward. We're actually planning a a, a, a campaign. Okay. to connect to as many small businesses as possible by mm -hmm. offering them a hundred dollar credit for Excellent. every business owner that needs help mm -hmm. um and still going on the path i think um you know people could look at me and say well how are you going to make money and all that sort of stuff and i do say like cash flow is important but with with what we know and what we understand um we're always finding ways of our primary focus is how we help small businesses mm -hmm. and how we connect them with corporate clients. So that's the work that we will still continue for the rest of this year. Um, and being a technology platform, we're always looking, we have, I mean, not looking, but we have a roadmap of additional features and what we can do to um, offer additional ways of helping the small businesses and, and planning that. Um, and still definitely um, expanding it to being global as well um, in, the, in, the, in the next six months. But, um, but that's the plan so far. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that. And um, moving on to our next question, um, Sandra. So if you look back to the time from an elect uh, Cummins operations, uh, what would you have done differently and why? Um, you know, I mean, even though like we, we, it took us a second go at the marketplace platform. Uh, the first one, we just had too many bugs after our beta launch and we just decided to ditch it and start again. Mm -hmm. And you could I say like, Oh, I wish I'd done that differently. Um, I think it was a really good learning experience okay. and it, and it made sure that, uh, whatever the technology enhancements, 
um, has given us the, the experience of the initial setback to do it, to to kind of like go on the right path. Mm-hmm. So, you know, for me, I don't believe in mistakes. I actually believe that they're all learnings and um, all of those learnings are helping me and I like to do better going mm-hmm. forward. Um, and we're still in early days, so I don't see anything that I would have done differently. Mm-hmm. I actually feel that we're at the right pace and at the right path for it. Excellent, excellent. That's that's really good to hear. And um, Sandra, moving on to our last question. Um, yeah. So what are the life and business lessons that you would like to share with someone who is planning to start a venture, a business or a service in a similar sector to yours in Australia? Um, I would say take the time mm-hmm. to um, create the right business model. Um, you can even start off with just having one customer. If there's one or two people who are willing to pay for your services, easily mm-hmm. without you really trying to harm them then you're on the right track and then just go from there so start small and grow from there um i actually don't i would actually believe like don't think small business is like winning a lottery ticket mm-hmm. um it's actually probably it is like winning a lottery ticket because it's very hard to win a lottery ticket if you go into a small business, go in there to find, to, to be the solution to people's pain or to, to people's problems, mm-hmm. then you'll see a business in that. If your business is not really solving the problem and you think it's a way to make a quick get rich scheme or anything like that, I think that's when you will, that's when you're on the wrong path. Excellent, excellent. And I think that's a great lesson. And I think that's probably why businesses exist, isn't it? To solve problems. Um, and especially you're a startup, you know, um, that's that's yeah. one of the most important things that you need to, um, you know, have a priority, uh, I think. Yeah, and it's problems that not problems that you think needs to be solved, actually mm-hmm. solve problems that people tell you what their problems are. I've seen a lot of, te- especially in the technology entrepreneurs who says, oh, wow, my product, my software is the best in the world because it's better than this. But it's it's not about being the best because people may not realize that's what they need. Mm-hmm. What what is actually if somebody says you know if I use marketing as an example, if somebody says I need a website, but you tell them I built you a social media platform, this is what you need. They say no no I need a website. Can you solve my website? But you build them a social media platform, and and, and you're saying you have the best social media platform. It doesn't solve the problem of that person. You may not want to solve that person's problem, but you know then you need to find the right person who needs who needs your solution to that problem, and then that's your market. But until you know what the problem is and the type of people who have that problem and how you solve them, um, you don't have a business. And that's mm-hmm. where I would say that go there first. Excellent, excellent. So thank you, thank you, Sandra, for sharing those um, insights. And I think. You've, um, you know, you have actually brought forth a lot of important points. One thing that stands out for me from our conversation is the importance of networking, uh, cash flow and problem solving. So three things I think uh, you've touched on and I think that's excellent. No worries. So thank thank you you, again, Tony, for having me at the show as well. And this is really good. Excellent. And thank you, Sandra. So uh, I wish you the very best with Elect and uh, hope you do pretty well into the future as you move forward. All the best. Thank you, Tony. Thank you.